Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Movie Snips. Today we're going to be talking about some of the animals and mutations in the Hunger Games movies. The, the North American continent entered a dystopian state of existence hundreds of years before the events of the Hunger Games series as a result of a series of great calamities. Exactly when these calamities occurred isn't revealed to us in any of the novels or the films, but one of the early scripts for the film states that the storyline is set about 300 years in the future. The exact nature of these calamities is also unknown, but many fans theorize that they were likely caused by a combination of factors, including climate change, overpopulation, natural disasters, ecological, e ecological collapse, wars, and drastic sea level rise. From what we've seen in the films, it seems that most animals and uh, most humans and animals haven't been affected, affected negatively by any of these calamities. So perhaps the conflicts that preceded the events of the main storyline were non-nuclear in nature. This is evidenced by the fact that the humans in the films appear to be perfectly normal, and many common animals that exist in our world are also present in the Hunger Games world. We're never told exactly what happened to the world beyond Pan Am's borders, and we are never shown any nuclear hot zones or radioactive regions anywhere within Pan Am. Some of the regular animals we see throughout the films include the cat seen in the first film. Presumably, this black and white cat was supposed to be Buttercup, but then as we see later on in, the, in Mockingjay 2, the black and white cat gets magically replaced by an orange cat closer to the muddy yellow Buttercup described in the book. Katniss always seemed to be on edge whenever this cat was around and seemed to harbor a grudge against it. Towards the beginning of the first film, Katniss goes out into the woods to hunt a deer. She also talks about hunting squirrels with Gale. Squirrel meat is a prized commodity in District 12 and can be exchanged for favors with the peacekeepers. Later we see people walking their dogs in the capital as well as horse-driven chariots in the opening ceremony of the 74th Hunger Games. It's clear these animals look like regular animals that exist here in our world. However, it gets interesting when the genetically modified animals of the capital are introduced towards the end of the first film, as well as in the arenas of the subsequent films. These terrifying animals are called mutations. Development, uh, development of the mutations began several de decades before the 74th Hunger Games and were originally created by Dr. Volumia Gall, a lady who was the head game maker of the 10th Hunger Games, as well as a university instructor and one of the chief scientists of the capital. She was also, also the mastermind behind the Capitol's Experimental Weapons Division, based at the Citadel. I won't discuss each mutation in excessive detail, but I'll briefly summarize each one. Uh, if you'd like to read more about the mutations, you can, you can, cl you can click on the link to the Hunger, Hunger Games fandom that I've left in the description. The, uh, the first and perhaps most obvious of the mutations were the wolf mutts that were shown in the first film. The novel describes these beasts as being half-human, half-wolf, with razor-sharp claws, being able to jump very high, and having great speed. Each wolf mutt was designed with a, face that, uh, with a face that resembled one of the tributes who had died previously in the games, and had a collar marked with the district number of the tribute it was based on, and had eyes that looked remarkably human. This made them all the more terrifying. However, in the first film, these animals clearly looked more wolf-like and didn't have the human attributes described in the novels. The Tracker Jacker is another easily recognizable mutation prominently featured in the first film. These deadly wasps were made by the capital and placed around the districts during the first rebellion. These are basically enlarged wasps on steroids and have a gold-colored body. Their stings cause lumps the size of plums on their victims and their venom causes fear-based hallucinations that can drive people insane. More than a few stings can kill a person, yet some people die after just one sting. These wasps will also hunt down anyone who disturbs their nest and attempt to kill them, and attempt to kill them. hence the name Tracker Jackers. It is unknown as to whether the Tracker Jackers can be trained to hone in on a particular person or group of people while leaving others alone. Next up, we have the monkey mutts seen in the arena of the Catching Fire movie. These monkeys res re resemble regular mandrel monkeys, but are highly aggressive with razor-sharp teeth and switchblade-like claws, which they use to inflict deep wounds that can cause internal bleeding. It isn't explained as to whether these monkeys are carnivorous or simply just aggressive plant-eating monkeys. 
Perhaps the most gruesome and terrifying of the mutts seen in the films were the lizard mutts seen in the tunnel scene of Mockingjay 2. These mutts were some combination of human and reptile and looked eerily, eerily reminiscent to gargoyles. In the film version, they lacked eyes and tails and probably had keen senses of smell and hearing that enabled them to track their victims effectively. These mutts were four-legged with sharp talons at the end of each finger and had tight pale white skin and were the size of humans. In the novel, they had long reptilian tails, arched backs, and heads that jut jaws, which enabled them to decapitate their victims in one bite. They're fast and dangerous, especially in large numbers. If you watch the scene from the film which shows the lizard mutts attacking Katniss and the rest of Squad 451, you'll notice that they don't possess superhuman strength as the squad members were able to keep them at bay and even throw them to the ground with their bare hands. Another more mild-natured mutt uh, is the Jabberjay bird that was created by the Capitol for the purpose of espionage. These birds are black-colored and exclusively male. During the first rebellion, the Capitol used these creatures to spy on the districts by listening in on their enemies' conversations and then repeating the spoken conversations back to the relevant authorities in the Capitol. The rebels in the districts eventually caught on to the scam and decided to use the birds to feed endless lies to the capital, which caused the capital to abandon the use of Jabberjays altogether. Whatever was left of the Jabberjay population began to mate with regular mockingbirds in the wilderness, which created the hybrid mockingjay bird, a prominent symbol of the Second Rebellion. The Jabberjays made an appearance in the 75th Hunger Games when Finnick and Katniss were trapped in one of the clock sections and they heard the screams of Annie and Prim, which were actually being simulated by the Jabberjays as a form of psychological torture. It can be assumed that the Jabberjays utilize some kind of vocal mimicry mechanism similar to the one used by parrots in our world. There are also a few other mutts that are worthy of mention that make minor appearances in the novels, but not in the films. These include snake mutts or genetically modified snakes that measured about a foot long with, thick, with the thickness of a pencil. These colorful snakes were highly venomous and could be trained to hone in on a particular scent. The novels also mention rabbit mutts, which had the bite force of a pit bull terrier, fluffy, fluffy carnivorous squirrels that attacked in packs, stinging butterflies that caused severe pain and even death, and candy pink birds with sharpened beaks that could pierce human flesh. It'll be interesting to see what kind of mutts are introduced in the upcoming prequel movie, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The overarching theme here is that these mutations are all bred for offensive purposes and inflict great physical and psychological pain on their victims. It is as if the mutant animals themselves exemplify the aggressive and vicious attitude of the capital towards the districts. We may not have mutations in our world, at least not any that we're aware of, but the use of animals as soldiers has been common throughout the history of warfare. The Roman legions used to use an ancient mastiff type of dog known as a molosser, as a watchdog and scout. Some of these dogs were even equipped with spike collars and battle armor and were trained to fight in formation. Wojtek, the Syrian brown bear, served as a private and corporal in the Polish army and was tasked with carrying 100-pound crates of artillery shells to the front lines in order to help the Allied war effort against the Nazis during World War II. Even today, the U.S. Navy has trained dolphins to detect mines and other potentially dangerous objects on the ocean floor that are difficult to, de to detect with electronic sonar, especially in coastal shallows or cluttered harbors. Joyner designs Ian Joyner, a character designer, illustrator, and conceptual artist worked on the mutations for the Hunger Games movie and posted graphic designs of the early concepts he developed for the creatures on his website. I've also left a link to his website in the description below. But what are your thoughts on the animals, both natural and genetically modified, in the Hunger Games? If you feel I missed anything or would like to add anything to this discussion, please feel free to comment down below. Please also remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and please check out my channel for more sci-fi lore videos.